Welcome back friends to Build A Lot Acres. In today's episode, we're gonna introduce you to the Super Split Log Splitter, so stay tuned. a kinetic log splitter meaning it uses kinetic energy to split the wood behind this cover there's gonna be a large cast iron flywheel and there's another one on the other side so when you pick up and release the lever it's gonna release that energy and push the ram out towards the wedge splitting the wood it's a very effective design super splits been around a long time I've seen super splits from the 70s um, there are a lot of copycat splitters nowadays I'm not gonna name brands but I would say starting in around 2008 or so, when they really started becoming popular, you started seeing tons of brands come out with them. A lot of those brands were recalled due to safety reasons. So if you're gonna think about getting a kinetic splitter, I would highly recommend looking at the original, which is gonna be the Super Split. So there's four basic models in the Super Split line. There's the J model, which is by far the most common. That's gonna be the smallest gas model, which is what I have here. There's gonna be a HD or heavy duty model. And then there's gonna be a SE, special edition model which is really designed for really tough wood like elm and they also make an electric super split but a lot of these gas splitters from super split can be converted over to electric fairly easily so keep that in mind if you're going to purchase one so there's a few key differences between the three gas models the j model the base model it's going to have the smallest engine when i bought my splitter back in 2011 it came with either uh, Subaru Robin engine which was the standard engine or you could pay extra and get an upgraded engine and get a Honda I chose to get the Subaru engine which I've had great luck with the they no longer make the Subaru small engines Subaru decided around October of 2017 to get out of the small engine business so you can only get these with a Honda engine now the flywheel weight is gonna be 75 pounds it's gonna have a two inch rack and a standard wedge the HD or the heavy duty model used to also have 75 pound flywheels up until 2012, they changed them and now they're 90 pounds. So if you have an HD model before 2012, there's really not a whole lot of difference from that in a J model. But the newer HD models do have an additional 30 pound flywheel weight. So that would be the biggest difference. And then I believe the HD model also has a smaller gap between the table and the beam. So you're going to have a less chance of getting slivers and stuff falling down through there. Now stepping up to the special edition or the SE model, that's where you really start noticing differences. You have 100 pounds of flywheel on each side, so 200 pounds versus 150 on the J model and 180 on the HD model. In addition to that, you're going to have a much bigger engine. The special edition model offers a 9 horsepower Honda with a gear reduction. So that's going to really come in nice when you want to power through tough stringy wood or crotched wood. Or anything like that you also have an upgraded rack system with se model it's heavier duty it's got a wider rack if you come across a lot of really tough splitting wood you might want to consider getting an se model now as far as up-to-date pricing i'm not going to give you exact prices because depending on when you watch this video prices can change a lot of that's going to depend on where you live i live in massachusetts which is where super splits are made they're made in the usa they're only about an hour away from me so i was able to drive there I actually did a tour of the shop with the owner, Paul. He's a very nice guy. And I picked my splitter up and it was ready. I didn't have to have it shipped or anything like that. So you may have to pay shipping costs if you live in a different area of the country or even in a different country. So for pricing, I would contact SuperSplit directly to get your up-to-date pricing in your area. So SuperSplit offers a production table. This does not come standard on the SuperSplit. You have to order this extra, but it's highly, highly recommended. I would not get a SuperSplitter without a production table. It easily doubles or triples your production, hence the name production table. So the standard production table is going to be 32 inches wide and 40 inches long. When I bought mine in 2011, they didn't offer a wide, extra wide production table like they do now in 2021. The extra wide production table is 42 inches wide, so it's 10 inches wider and it's 46 inches long, so it's 6 inches longer. If I was to get a super splitter today, I would absolutely order it with the extra wide production table. It'll be well worth it. So you'll notice I have some custom some custom details that I made onto the super splitter. 
to make it easier and even better for me. The first thing I did was extend the table. This is gonna come in really handy. When you're splitting wood, it gives you somewhere to stage the wood. The second thing I did was I added this tow hitch. You can buy tow hitches from Super Split, but I just decided to make my own. Third thing I did was I added a toolbox. This is gonna hold things you're gonna need for your Super Split. You're gonna need some kind of a putty knife or a chisel to scrape the beam off. You're gonna need some kind of lubricating spray to spray the beam, a little grease gun for the roller bearing, earmuffs for protection, maybe a little broom. You're gonna need a 916 wrench. Sometimes this carriage can loosen up, so you need to tighten these bolts periodically. So either have a 916 wrench or socket on hand when you use a super split. And the last thing I did was I made these stabilizing legs. After I made this extension table and I started stacking wood on it, I noticed that it could get a little tippy side to side. So basically it's just, this is actually from an old dog kennel. So I just pull the bow and then I can adjust the height depending on how even or unlevel the ground is. That kind of keeps it much more stable, gives it some stabilizing legs to, to use. So now that we've discussed some of the basics, let's take it into the woods and see how it works. There's a number of ways you can split your wood, especially if you're on a budget. First way is going to be with an axe. That's going to be the most basic tool you could use to split wood. You could also use a maul. This is going to be a much heavier duty tool. It's going to be much better for bigger wood. So let's demonstrate these two hand tools. The axe we're going to use on this 8 inch piece of red oak. For small straight grain pieces, the axe is really nice. You can also use it on larger pieces, but I would recommend chipping it away from the edges. So let's try this 18 inch piece of red oak. This is gonna be much bigger. There's a few knots in the back side here. Let's try them all out on this piece. All right, so you can see it takes a few hits. Even with a heavier duty tool, it still takes multiple hits to get through this large piece of wood. Now I process my wood 20 inches long, so the longer your wood is, the harder it's gonna to be to split. A lot of times you'll see people processing 14 or 16 inches. So if you plan on hand splitting, keep in mind the length of how long your wood is cut to is gonna make it harder to split the longer it gets. So let's move on to the gas splitter, my personal favorite. Now to really be efficient with any splitter, whether it's hydraulic or kinetic or electric, you want the wood close by like I have here. Ideally, I would have my wood in a row all lined up so I could just turn, put on the splitter and go. If you have to take multiple steps to go get your wood each time, you're killing a lot of time and you're not being very efficient. So have your splitter packed as close as possible to the wood. One thing I always like to do is there's going to be a mark on the beam where your roller is going to wear in. You're going to want to scrape that off with a chisel or a putty knife. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to take the chisel, in this case, and just scrape off any extra. We're going to brush off any of the debris. We're going to take a good gel lubricant. In this case, you could use WD-40, probably even use oil. We're just going to give it a good spray so everything slides nice. Let's start her up and try it out.
Now ideally I'd be splitting either into a trailer or into an IBC tote. I'm just doing today's video for demonstration purposes, but I would recommend parking either a trailer or something at the end of your table to split right into. It'll be less handling of your wood and it'll be a lot more efficient. So let's clear it off and try some bigger pieces, shall we? Even not really going all that fast, just for demonstration purposes, I was able to split a decent amount of wood in only 10 to 15 minutes time. If I was really trying and I had everything lined up, I could do a quarter an hour with this machine by myself, which I don't think you could say that for hardly any hydraulics machine. Uh, maybe if you get into the real high end, Easton Made or Timberwolf or Wolf Ridge, but those splitters are gonna cost eight, $10,000. You're comparing a $10,000 splitter to a $3,000 kinetic splitter, so it's really not fair. So if we're gonna compare this to other $3,000 hydraulic splitters, I don't think you're gonna find anything that can keep up with a super split. These are nice and light, they're easy to move around. They're simple, they don't use a lot of gas because they're small engines. There's not that many really parts you have to replace. There's no hydraulic fluid to deal with. So there's a number of benefits to owning kinetic splitters. So if you think a kinetic splitter might be right for you, Please go check out the super split line. So let's talk about the one Achilles heel of these super splits. This one little bearing, cam follower, yoke roller, roller bearing, whatever they call them. That can really be the one thing that can slow you down a little on these machines. You'll see it leaves this little film on the beam itself. So you have to change these bearings once in a while. I have a few of them on hand. I buy them by the half a dozen. I'll just change it when they go bad. It is cross drilled right here. You can see the hole in the head of the bolt. So you can apply grease there. Sometimes it doesn't want to accept it that well. But that is the one Achilles heel to these machines. If this doesn't go back smoothly, you can see the rack can have a little bit more resistance than it should. This should go back by itself, which it always, it doesn't always, because you got to keep the beam smooth and clean. As you saw earlier, I, I scraped it off, I brushed it, and then I applied oil. And it's still within only a couple hours of use sometimes. And get a little sticky so keep that in mind if you're considering getting a kinetic splitter so another trick with the super splitter is that you should know you always want to make sure that your wedge is a little higher than where your ram starts so if you have a slight uphill 
you're gonna have gravity working with you to get your ram to slide back as i said sometimes it can stick with the roller bearing design that they have so gravity can really help in that situation let's split a few more pieces as you saw I showed you a couple tricks if you have pieces that aren't st cut straight on the ends they're angled you always want to put the angled end towards the wedge that's going to keep it from kicking out and possibly flying back and hitting the splitter or hitting you that could cause a bad day in a hurry another trick is if you have a forked piece you always want to put the forks towards the wedge you don't want the forks on the ram side you want the most power from the splitter all the inertia in the beginning to split the hardest part of the wood which is going to be the forks it's also going to keep it from kicking out and possibly hitting you. The last thing I'm going to show you is this little box I made. Now this is to adjust the height of the leg that holds the splitter. If you don't have adjustable legs like I have on the end of the table, this is an easy way that you can do it and not have to spend a lot of money. I can just put these adjustable height blocks inside of here and I can raise this up to make up for uneven ground. Like I said, you always want to have the splitter at a slight tilt so that the ram naturally goes back towards the splitter and away from the wedge. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've enjoyed doing it. As always, please like and subscribe and have a great day.